Sure, uh, Wingfoot One is our newest airship in the Goodyear fleet. Uh, it's the, the, that type is going to be replacing our whole North American fleet by the end of 2017. Um, huge steps forward in technology for us. So um, avionics, technology, uh, maneuverability, capability in the airship, it's a big leaps forward, forward for us and gives us a platform that we can use well into the future. So we're excited about Wingfoot One being the first one out there. So Wingfoot One is pretty different uh, from the old airships. It's uh, three engines make it much more capable, and the engines being Lycoming IO360 engines, uh, specially adapted through a 90 degree gearbox, it spins about a nine foot propeller, three, bla three bladed propeller, that's full vectoring and fully reversible propeller. So it can vector up to 120 degrees in the forward engines and down 90 degrees on the aft engine. Uh, fully forward and reversible controllable pitch propellers, which give us the ability to take off and land basically like a helicopter in this airship. So because of that capability, uh, we can do a lot more maneuvers that we weren't able to do with the old one, uh, mostly because we can hold it in a place and then we can manipulate it from there rather than relying strictly on dynamic flight to keep it aloft similar to an airplane. Yeah, hovering is a capability that we didn't particularly have before. In order to hover in the old airships, we had to have exactly the right wind. So we had to have wind basically to match our forward airspeed, and we could hold still in one spot. With the new airship, because of the vectoring capability uh, and the engines mounted the way they are, we're able to hover anytime we want. The other thing that we can do is kind of rock the ship back and forth, because as we're vectored 90 degrees up, it's like a helicopter having two rotors. And as we increase and reduce power on each one, we can get it to rock, which is pretty cool. It looks neat, and we'll demo that uh, any time that we have the, the ability to. Um, the other thing that it can do is uh, is pitch a bow, but stay in one place, which is very unique to airships because we can control the nose uh, both up and down and left and right in still air without having the ground crew help us manipulate the airship. So it's uh, a lot more capable, even though it's a larger airship than what we used to fly. So Wingfoot 1 is 246 feet long. That's almost 55 feet longer than the GZ20 model, which is 192 feet long. Uh, it's not a whole lot wider around than the envelope, but because the engines stick out, it's a little bit wider overall than the GZ20 model was. Uh, at about 60 feet wide and uh, almost 60 feet tall as well. It's a pretty big airship. Uh, the displacement in the envelope is almost 297,500 cubic meters, which is about 2.25 million gallons of helium to help keep us aloft. The airship overall weighs 20,000 pounds without the helium, uh, so the helium lifts about 98% of that, and then the, the vectoring uh, engines and thrust is able to overcome an additional 880 pounds max gross takeoff weight. Sure. In an airship, uh, we don't rely on our engines for lift because the, the airspeed, although we do rely on airspeed to keep the airship aloft depending on the weight of the airship, a great majority of our lift is in the helium. So the helium doing most of the heavy lifting work, we rely on the engines mostly for forward airspeed just to get from A to B. So because of that, we can run engines at much lower power settings than your average airplane. Your average airplane gets down in the 50, 55% range and all of a sudden you're flying at a real high angle of attack and have a hard time staying locked. We routinely will fly any of our airships in the 28 uh, to about 40% power range, which, re which allows us, even with 200 horsepower engines, um, to run three engines at about 11 or 12 gallons an hour total fuel burn between all three engines. So significantly less fuel burn in an airship than what you would see in a similar engine in an airplane because most of the lift is in the helium itself. Uh, well, flying an airship is like flying a boat, so uh, you have to just get used to the fact that it's a little bit slow to respond. You have to stay ahead of it, so if you have uh, currents in the air, which are similar to ocean currents, you have to kind of correct for those and start feeling those before they actually make a, a significant movement in the airship, because once the airship's moving in one direction, to get it to come back and go the other way, uh, even with the new technology, takes it a little bit of time. So you put the flight control input in there, and you wait about a three to five count, and the airship starts coming around for you. So you just have to anticipate that kind of stuff. Flying the airship is very much feel flying, more so than any other aircraft that I've ever flown before. Uh, I have a couple of hours in helicopters, and those are pretty maneuverable. I have lots of hours in fixed-wing airplanes, 
And although you can do some cool stuff, depending on the type of airplane that you have, even some of the small, very lightweight uh, bush flying airplanes, um, the capability that those have and the feel flying that those take uh, isn't even comparable, I don't think, to the airship, just because you have to stay ahead of that thing as it rides thermals up and down, and rides air currents left and right. In order to keep it anywhere in the, in the realm of the direction you want it to go, it takes some work, it just takes some getting used to. Well, the airship's a celebrity, so I get to do stuff like this, but I'm more the entourage, so uh, taking the airship anywhere you go, it's, it's great sharing the experience with the people. It just has an um, inherent uh, draw to it that, you know, you see excited faces and folks that get to fly, you get to share the experience and be right there with them, you know, you're flying, but you're still talking to the folks that are flying up there with you, uh, just sharing the experience and then, you know, obviously building the brand at the same time, which is a win-win for for Goodyear uh, and for the folks that get to see the blimp that are just blimp loaders. So I really enjoy sharing the experience and, and getting out there and talking to the people and watching the watching all the kids line the fences everywhere we go. It's really unique.